Welcome back to the Epic TV Avalanche Awareness Series. In previous videos, we looked at the basics of planning your trip and using your gear. In this video, we're going to cover how to confirm the forecasted avalanche danger by recognizing the obvious warning signs and making important snowpack observations. Checking the weather forecast and avalanche bulletin before you head into the mountains will give you information on the anticipated danger over a wide area. But conditions can change quickly in the mountains and being able to recognize the avalanche clues in your specific area is vital to getting the information to stay safe. So Peter, what are those avalanche warning signs? We're always looking for recent avalanche activity it's a sheer indicator that we've got an instability that exists now. That can happen naturally due to extra wind, move snow, precip, and other things that aren't natural. Skiers, snowmobilers, helicopters, anything that can trigger them off. Secondly, we're always thinking about a significant amount of precipitation, whether it be rain or snow. It adds a lot of weight to the snowpack and can trigger things naturally. Then we're also concerned, particularly in the spring, with rapid warming. It loosens up the top of the snow, that's great, but when it starts working down in, we might have a danger. One of the first warning signs we see if things picking up is uh, rollerballing, which is evident from a uh, a couple days ago over here, actually yesterday. When we're moving, cracking, wumping underneath our skis, often uh, something that just gives you the hackles, right? Uh, you don't really uh, want to be on slopes that are talking to you. That's the bottom line, because it tells you of a weakness underneath your feet. And lastly, uh, wind loading. We don't necessarily have to have uh, to be snowing for slopes to load up. We can have uh, lots of wind deposited snow as we have here you can see all these little shadowy areas show you the the difference between the shiny stuff and recent snow that's uh, dull in color and near the shade so we can go test some of those areas and get an indication of how safe they are so what's the best way to actually examine the snowpack in those areas well the key thing is picking a place that's representative to the, where you want to ski that's representative to the danger but safe okay well let's go have a look Slope angle and aspect are important ingredients in assessing the snowpack. FatMap has a useful tool to help you do just that. Gradient is by far the single most important factor uh, when you're making decisions about safety in avalanche terrain. Um, and we wanted to create a map that allows you to see very clearly the gradient that you're going to be traveling through so that you can understand how to choose the safest line. There are many other techniques for testing the snowpack. The compression test and the extended column test are particularly useful. We recommend you research the compression test as it's quick and easy to do. In this program, we're going to show you the extended column test because it gives you a bit more information than the compression test. It assesses the fracture initiation and propagation, and this is the only test that's reliable when done on low angle terrain. So talk me through the extended column test. OK, Graham, well, what I've done is uh excavated out the front face here, plenty deep, probably twice as deep as where I've got my uh, suspected weakness, which is about 25 centimeters down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna isolate the column. And the column here is 90 centimeters wide, 30 centimeters upslope. So I, what I do is I put a, uh, my probe in one spot, nice and vertical. I can use two probes, but I don't have two probes with me. I could use yours. But I just take the basket off my other my pole, and then I put these down the back. And this allows me to quickly uh, put this cord around these, and then I just saw and I pull a little wider here, so I just want it to be able to drop freely out this way. So the knotted rope is going to cut down through the snow. That's right. The knotted rope cuts quite easily down through uh, soft snow. I've got the isolated column. Next thing I'm going to do is, uh, is tap on it progressively until it fails. So it's going to be 10 taps from my wrist, 10 from my elbow, and then 10 from my shoulder. Usually tap on the place that uh, isn't as deep. One, the extended two, column test should be done on a slope of about 30 degrees. 
but an angle of 25 to 30 degrees can also give good results with less risk. A little crack higher up. It's important to research and thoroughly understand the meaning behind different results in order to gain an indication of what the snow looks like under the surface. Yeah, I see a bit of a crack. So now we're into the hard, all the way from my shoulder. One kind of hurts. Great. So that was the second tap from our shoulder. So what did the extended column test tell you? Well, it told me that I have a weakness that's, in this case, where I've done this one is uh, approximately 15 centimeters deep. Uh, so that gives me an idea of the consequence I'm dealing with on the day. It's also showing me that the block of snow and slides easily on a nice clean surface. That tells me that I can expect it to probably propagate into an avalanche from initiating an avalanche, and it's probably going to run pretty quick. Join us next episode, where we show you how to read the mountain, plan and calculate risk while traveling in avalanche terrain. <laughs>